Um, really sloppy first half. Uh, felt like I was in an extra innings baseball game because it went forever and um, we weren't scoring points. That's for certain. Uh, got a long way to go to get where we need to go, but I want to be positive about uh, the second half and uh, what the guys were able to do, get a little energy, juice. I thought uh, we were very stagnant and just undisciplined penalties and Every time we had something going, we'd shoot ourselves in the foot. It was either a 15-yard penalty, 10-yard penalty, or a turnover. And you can't win football games um, doing those things. So uh, I am proud of the way they were resilient second half. I thought our special teams uh, played really well. Um, give a lot of credit to Arkansas's defense. They gave us uh, some problems. But we, we've, got to, we've got to improve and get better. My bad. My fir our first question tonight will go to Seth Emerson. Hey, hey Kirby. Um, I'll start with the quarterbacks. Can you take us through the decision to to bench Dwan and and put in Stetson and where where this leaves you going forward? Yeah, you know we were on the headphones and, and we talked and said we were struggling offensively. We didn't have a lot of rhythm and felt like we needed to change some things up. I don't know how many drives we were into uh, with Dwan's. It felt like five, maybe six. I don't know how many total it was. Uh, before we, we went with Stetson, but you know, we just thought it would give us some energy. There's some things he can do well, and uh, he's different than Dewan in, in some of his experience, and it gave us a spark. Uh, it helped us out. He's, he's very decisive with the ball. He makes good decisions. Uh, he understands what the defense is trying to do to him. So getting to watch uh, them defensively a little bit, I think, helped him. Uh, and right now, going forward, we'll, we'll, we'll decide uh, this week how we're going to go forward. I think we got to go back and watch the tape. Um, not not all of those things that went wrong were Dewan's fault. Uh, and, uh, I know a lot of people will blame Dewan or fans, media, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's on all of us to get it right. And uh, not all of those were bad decisions, and uh, not all of those were bad throws. He made some good throws, um, but we got to get better. That's for sure. Next question will go to Mark Weiser. Hey, Kirby, I want to ask you, um, how would JT Daniels, uh, you know, his situation with his knee, and can he factor in um, to the quarterback situation in the next week, you think? He can factor in uh, as soon as he gets cleared, and uh, I think he's got a lot of confidence as well. And when you say the two most experienced guys, uh, probably uh, JT and um, Stetson in terms of having played football games. But regardless of who the quarterback is, guys, we can't hold people. We can't line up in the backfield. We can't jump off sides. Uh, we can't turn the ball over. So a lot of that doesn't have to do with the quarterback position. And I know that's the one that everybody wants to talk about. And I, I respect that. But I'm also smart enough and wise enough to know that that's not all all the, the, the malfunctions we have. We're not just on the quarterback. Next question will go to Dean Leggy. Kirby, how did you think y'all played defensively? I mean, the one touchdown seemed like a blown coverage. I'm not sure I'm smart enough to know the answer to that. But how did you think y'all played uh, moving forward from that point? Uh, you know, I thought we played hard um, and had to go out there a lot. I felt like we played a lot of snaps in the first half. Um, we lost contain on the touchdown pass and ran a stunt where we tried to get some penetration and, and get him flushed. So we lost contain, and then a guy got behind us. I wouldn't call it a busted coverage as much as it was a, a good route against a, a, a poor coverage. Um, and give Arkansas credit. They ran a scissors route and did a good job getting the guy open. Um, but they were resilient, man. They they fought. Uh, they got put in a lot of tough situations, and uh, thank goodness we have a lot of experience on that side of the ball. And the best thing they did is they never, you know, never pointed any fingers, never blamed anybody. Just just kept working. Next question, we'll go to Anthony Dasher. Coach, what was your thoughts on the play of the offensive line? In the first half, you had a couple of guys and moving in and out. Uh, what was your feeling about the way they played? Uh, I'll reserve judgment until I watch the tape. Uh, I, you know, we didn't really move a lot of guys around in the first half, to be honest with you. We didn't play but uh, six guys. So uh, there wasn't a lot going on there. With six guys playing. That was more of a, a, a rotation that we've always had, felt good about um, with Warren, Trey, and Ben in there. Um, I think we got to play better all together offensively is the biggest thing. Uh, we got to find some guys that are willing to fight for extra yards and knock people off the ball to help us. There were some some young guys out there, and we'll, we'll review how they played, but I'm not ready to say played good or bad right now. Next question will go to Augusta Stone with the red and black. 
Hey, Kirby, I wanted to talk a little bit about the defense's performance today. Without those interceptions from LeCount and Stokes, like how much do you think those really affected Georgia's momentum? And then as well as just like if you take those out, how does the game kind of end up in your perspective? I don't know. It probably would have mattered what would have happened after we didn't get the interception. Uh, it would tell me a lot more about how it would have ended. But um, the, the, those guys play hard. They work hard. They practice hard. They got uh, a lot of experience, and uh, we're going to have to to use them as we build uh, the rest of our team up and we grow as a team. Um, we talk about complimentary football all the time. Um, it doesn't matter when the turnover happens, first drive, second half, you got to go out and stop them. And uh, I love those guys and the way they compete. They they got so much fire. They just love playing the game. And you know, I didn't I didn't watch it as closely as I have in the past, trying to work through some of the offensive stuff. But I thought they played really hard. Thank you. Next question, we'll go to uh, Mike Griffith. Uh, yeah, Kirby, just the environment, COVID game, you know, your takeaway, how different was it? Was it different or, or was it still football? Or, or do you think that atmosphere was different and may have played some sort of role? No, the, the atmosphere was great. I mean, the, 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 the crowd noise made it seem like it was a normal game. You know, I think as a competitor and a, a football player and a coach, you don't – it's not – there's no concern for how many people are in the stands. I mean, once they pumped in the noise, it didn't feel any difference. As a matter of fact, I thought it got uh, pretty loud on some third downs between what fans they had and also the crowd noise they pumped in. So that uh, that had no outcome on our uh, uh, ability to execute. That, that had nothing to do with that. We just got to do a better job. Is there anything – Anything you can attribute that that start to? Is there anything you can put your finger on as far as why you guys look so sloppy and uncharacteristic? Yeah, it starts with the penalties. It starts with guys busting assignments and guys missing signals and not doing what they're supposed to do. That's 100% what I attribute it to. So when you turn the ball over, which we did when we had a good drive, when you hold people and you line up in the backfield, you're not going to have a lot of success. That's just not going to happen. Nobody's going to give you plays on second and 15 and second and 20, it's just not going to happen. You got to be efficient. You got to execute. You got to uh, uh, be clean. We call it playing clean. We did not play clean today. Next question, we'll go to uh, Brandon Sudge at the Macon Telegraph. Yeah, hey, uh, Kirby, going back over to uh, Stetson, uh, when we were speaking to him earlier, he was saying uh, when y'all signed him back, he kind of saw um, that he had a potential to do this. Maybe that's just his mentality to come in and play in these situations. But what is it about him that um, gave you confidence to put him in in a situation like this? Is he somebody that, that you guys have a lot of trust in as a coaching staff? And have y'all told him that he's the type of guy who can be in these situations? Yeah, I would just say that the number one thing is experience. Uh, experience at that position is a premium. And I think you see that more and more across the SEC as you look at the quarterbacks that are here and the quarterbacks that aren't here. And Stetson has played in a lot of football games. Everybody forgets he went to Mississippi and played in the JUCO League where he played, I guess, 10 games or something and got to play a whole season. That value of playing that season uh, is immense in terms of getting reps. Then he came here and he took every single rep for an entire year behind Jake Fromm as the two. So we knew, we felt comfortable with what we had in Stetson in terms of all his reps he had taken. Stetson, unfortunately, did not get a ton of reps uh, in mini camp uh, leading up to uh, the first practices. He has not gotten a ton of reps. But we understand that he, is, he prepares himself the right way without taking the reps. Uh, and he did a good job of showing that today when he went in and was able to execute the game plan. Next question goes to Chip Towers. Yeah, Kirby, I, I know you know Stetson's story better than anybody, but, uh, you know, knowing that you've got a lot to fix and another game to prepare for, how is there any sense of satisfaction that this, this kid from South Georgia got to come in and rally his team from behind to a victory? I wouldn't say satisfaction because I'm disappointed in our performance. You know what I mean? Like I'm proud and happy for Stetson. I wouldn't take that moment away from him. Uh, no way, no, no way in the world. Cause he did a great job and he rallied the guys around him. And I think they saw uh, his competitive spirit, you know, some of those scrambles and the two point play. And, and that's, that's the juice we needed. 
he gave us the the juice we needed and um he's a he's a he's, he's a great competitor you know i spent a whole year with him on the scout team the one year he was here and you got to see the guy uh very composed very very good poise next question we'll go to uh dudley dawson coach obviously you know coach Pittman very well to get uh, his first head coaching job here and, and, his, and get out there today just what did you see from his team and and you know the fact that he's got you know a rebuilding effort to do well we talked for the game and uh, his kids believe and I know from trying to start the program in Georgia it starts with that fight and competitiveness I, I respect the way his team played and competed um, right down to the wire I, I love the fact that he was trying to fight and compete at the end to score call timeouts I got a lot of respect for that because your kids they need to they need they need that opportunity you know I mean we're only guaranteed 10 games and those aren't guaranteed in the, the pandemic we're in so you better enjoy it and go play and, and they competed throughout the game thanks for our next question we'll go to Eric Bolin with the Associated Press hey coach uh so Coming back around on Stetson, um, did you feel like it took him a while to get comfortable? I mean, I, I don't want to say you maybe second guessing that decision or whatever with DeWan struggling, but uh, how long did it take until you really got comfortable with what he was doing out there? With Stetson? Yes. Oh, I mean, I was, I was comfortable with Stetson. I mean, I'll be honest with you guys, I got a lot of confidence in all quarterbacks, and I actually still have confidence in Dewan. We didn't execute well. There's not, it's not all Dewan's fault. Uh, we did that to, to try to inject some energy. You do that sometimes to try to get some enthusiasm. You change up backs, you change up wide receivers and probably no greater position than the quarterback where you have to uh, provide some, some energy if it's not going the way you need it to go. Um, and fortunately Stetson was able to do that, but it wasn't like we had to kind of walk Stetson into it. I mean, Stetson's, he, he takes reps in practice. He, he, he functions in practice. He functioned in scrimmages when we had our scrimmages. He, he does a good job of leading the offense. He, he did that uh, a couple of years ago in a spring game where he went down and did some good things. Our next question will go to Jake Rowe. Uh, Kirby, obviously you guys saw a, a lot out of DeWan enough to start him today. Um, did what do you think was kind of his issue? I know you said that it's not all on him. What do you think was kind of – was it nerves? Was it inexperience that kind of struck him? And then how do you kind of deal with his confidence and, and uh, ability to bounce back from that? Well, you find out a lot about yourself when you look in the mirror and you got to say, what do I got to do to make my team better? And I think the whole team has to do that, you know, from every man on our team, from special teams, defense, and offense. And – and the only conversations we've had on here today have really been about the quarterback. And there's a group of men in that locker room behind me that played their hearts out. And I get it. I respect it. But those kids fought just as hard at quarterback, too. And uh, it's the most criticized position there is in all sport, along with the head coach. And that's that's tough. That's tough for a guy like DeWan, who's given everything he, he can to this program. He's worked his butt off. And, uh, you know, today wasn't his day. He didn't have a great day. And some of it was what they were doing. Some of it was what we were doing. And not all of it was his. You know, when you got a, a route that a guy's in zone, he's supposed to break in. And, 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 and man, he's supposed to man, he's only supposed to sit. Man, he's supposed to break in. And he doesn't do it. Sometimes that can throw things off. And it's not all on the quarterback. But to the, you know, the, the average fans, I, I get it. There's going to be a lot of criticism there. And we got to do a better job as a staff, including me, of helping our quarterbacks to be successful. Next question, we'll go to Allison Mastrangelo with WSB. Hey, Coach. Going into next week, what is that? You know, there's a lot that you have to look at the tape, but right now one thing that you really want to improve on going into your second game of the season with this team? Just execution, uh, you know, no dumb penalties. You're going to have some penalties, aggressive penalties, I call them all the time. You know, we had – I think we had two face masks that were really critical and hurt us. Um, but you can't line up in the backfield. You can't have silly penalties, have guys flinch, uh, grab a guy that's not going to make the play, you know, even on punt return. I, that, that would be the number one thing for me to clean up is just to take away uh, some of the silly penalties. Next 